Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. Hope they can inspire you as well. And we'll have links below this video to their sites. Hey, Rabbi Shalom Arush, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yosef Zrafi, Rabbi Eli Mansour, Rabbi Alon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Avadja, Rabbi Daniel Astro, Nisan Barak Black, David Sack, Rabbi Michael Skobak, Jewish for Judaism, Rabbi David Ashir, and Rabbi Ron Ruvain. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for the soul means, what it stands for, what I'm doing. So this is again from the weekly Parsha Insights from Rabbi Eli Mansour. And this one is related to Parashat Vayeshev, and I call this spiritual fortification to resist harmful influences. So the Torah in Parashat Vayeshev tells of Yosef's travails in Egypt, where he was forcibly brought after having been sold as a slave by his brothers. He ended up working for an Egyptian nobleman named Potiphar, whose wife desired an intimate relationship with Yosef. She repeatedly tried luring him to sin, but he resisted. Finally, she grabbed his garment, whereupon he immediately ran from the house. Potiphar's wife then falsely charged that Yosef tried to assault her. Our sages see that on that final occasion, Yosef merely succumbed to temptation and decided he would commit the grievous, this grievous sin. At the last moment, however, an image of his father Yaakov appeared, pleading with him to desist, and this gave Yosef the strength to avoid committing this misdeed. How exactly did Yaakov's image succeed in helping Yosef overcome this great challenge? Why did this vision give him the strength he needed to avoid sinning with Potiphar's wife? So Rav Chaim Palachi from Turkey explained that the sages refer here to the great merit of Yosef's outstanding respect and loyalty to his father. Yaakov had sent Yosef to check on his brothers as they shepherded the family sheep in the fields of Shechem. Yosef knew how much his brothers despised him. The Torah tells us that the brothers' hostility toward Yosef reached the point that, where they were incapable of speaking peacefully with him. It was thus perfectly clear to Yosef that his brothers resented and hated him. Going to see them out in the pastures as they shepherded their sheep was certainly a risky mission for Yosef to undertake. And yet Yosef obeyed his father's wish unconditionally. He paid no heed to the dangers entailed and happily went to fulfill his father's request. It was the merit of disobedience, Rabbi Chaim Palachi writes, that protected Yosef in Egypt. He was a vulnerable 17-year-old boy who was forcibly driven to a foreign country. A country whose decadent, corrupt culture stood in direct opposition to everything he had learned from his father, to everything his tradition taught him. Normally, there could be no possible way for Yosef to spiritually survive under such conditions. We know how concerned observant parents are in today's day and age when the children go off to colleges, even colleges with regular minyan and Torah classes and kosher food, fearful that their child might fall prey to negative influences. Yes, that's a big issue in this day and age, unfortunately. Hashem Rachem Rahman al it's it's just rampant that it's very hard. It's really best not to send your children to college or they should go to, you know, a um, higher place for, for men like Kolel or some type of place in Midrashia for women because really in this day and age, and the, the kids are not, it's hard for them to resist because it's, it's so rampant, the all the negative influences. So I think it's best to just, try to find a different method or, you know, maybe do your learning online. There's plenty of schools you could do that way, too. That's maybe better. I don't know. Anyway, uh, continuing on. So Yosef found himself in a country where he was the only Jew. He certainly had no minyan, kosher food, or organized Torah classes. He was all alone in a culture steeped in values that were antithetical to his own. Remarkably, however, he succeeded in maintaining his loyalty to his family's, va family's values and traditions. What protected Rav Chaim Palachi, writes, was the merit of his kibbutz up, his respect for his father. It was his absolute, unconditional, and unwavering obedience to his father that provided him with the spiritual fortification he needed to resist the harmful influences of Egypt, including the persistent efforts made by Potiphar's wife to lure him to sin. So you see how Hashem, because he did something good, Hashem protected him in another way. So we never know what it is that we do that's going to help protect us. So in our day and age, we need spiritual protection more than ever. Not unlike Yosef, we are submerged in a culture that is hostile and antithetical to our traditions, values, ideals, and the way of life, like I mentioned before. And this culture infiltrates our homes constantly to the point where we can no longer hide from it. But in addition, our culture is progressively chipping away at the notion of parental authority. Our greatest source of protection from hostile spiritual influences, kibbutz up, respecting parents is itself quickly growing, quote, out of style. It's also another issue, and we're in the times of Chayel Mashiach, so, unfortunately. Uh, so we need to reinforce our commitment to this vitally important mitzvah, um, to the obligation to respect and obey parents. Just as this mitzvah protected Yosef in Egypt, it is what will protect us, too, from the overwhelming hostile influences in which we are exposed on a constant basis in our society. Also, learning Torah a lot for men and modesty for women, those are also helpful, and you have to keep infusing yourself with the antidote. 
Um, and also for women to her too. I mean, keep infusing yourself. Keep staying away from it. The more you put that in, the less you're interested in the other stuff as well. And I hope and pray that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Amen, and thanks for watching.